Um, so thanks everyone for coming. Day after a public holiday. Um, you know, I think uh, it's the first time I'm excited to be somewhere after a public holiday. So um, we try to time it as close as we can with the with the US announcements and the European announcements. So you know, we were, we were within the weekend of, uh, of different things. We would have done this yesterday, but obviously because it was a public holiday, I don't think anybody would have been uh, uh, wanting to, to work. So, so we're here to talk about the new Razor um, that's finally coming into the Australian market. We've seen this announced you know, overseas. It's gone on pre-sales now, or pre-order in the US and in, in Europe. Um, and it will be going on pre-order as of today, um, later on at six o'clock. So, you know, mum's the word until 6 p.m. Uh, well, the font police will be all over me with the rash. Okay, uh, let's keep going. So we'll take it through a bit of the, the little launch video. Ah, so we'll talk about history and innovation first before, before we break this part. So, um, innovation and folding. For those who have been around for a long time, you're a fossil like me, um, Motorola has actually led the world in flip technology. Um, from some of the very first flips, which was the StarTac back in the uh, mid 90s. And this was, uh, you know, uh, an analog CDMA and TDMA product all in one back at the time. And then, you know, they kind of got smaller and smaller, the 3688, and then we went into the V series. So the first V series, which was incredibly small for its time when it came out um, with the etched, etched um, keypad. And then that evolved. We sold over 1.3 million of the original Vs of these ones here. Uh, and then, you know, as we did the 3G version and, and other iterations over the generations of the product, we, we sold, you know, in excess of a couple of million units in Australia. So the Razor brand um, is very synonymous. You say Razor, everybody knows Razor. Uh, it's probably the only phone in the world that's made it to Monopoly on, as a little icon on the Monopoly board set. Um, one of them's a little fold, one of them's a little phone. Um, and we continue with that innovation today. So the current Razor has been in development for just over four years, um, especially the display. So the display is an evolution of our shatterproof display technology. So we, we launched in Australia the X-Force, which is a shatterproof uh, phone, so the display would not break. Um, and we continue the development of that until we've got um, you know, a very wafer-thin plastic uh, AMOLED display that's been designed in-house. We haven't sourced this from, from another ADM. And we've, we have, we've ramped up manufacturing with two dedicated plants in Taiwan um, to, uh, to bring this to market, as well as a unique hinge assembly. Um, and it was only till beginning of last year that we found a way of being able to do a hinge and get a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bend radius on the display, which basically meant no gap uh, in the display. Um, there's some other little tricks that we've done with the display, and I'll take you through that a little bit later on. But we've kept the lineage and the classic razor design with the chin. And it's not just a nostalgic, it actually does have a function. Um, all the antennas are based at the bottom of the device, because um, there's not much room anywhere else to put the antennas. The battery is actually split into two. So there's a battery on the bottom and there's a battery on the top. And the reason why we do that is basically for balance of the device. So when you're holding the device, uh, it won't tip one way or the other. So it feels comfortable and ergonomic uh, in the hand. Um, so we'll take you through a little video now, and then I'll take you through some more. This song was actually written specifically for the Razor launch uh, by a, a group um, and then was announced. So we're reintroducing the Razor. It will be available today on pre-sale um, from 
6 p.m. on motorola.com.au, Telstra, and JB Hi-Fi. So Telstra would be our launch carrier partner. JB Hi-Fi is our launch retail partner. Um, and the cost will be 2699. Now, um, if you've done research for the overseas, you'll see that Europe's around 1600 euro and the UK is 1499 British pounds. If you do the conversions, it's about 24 to 2500. Um, the US pricing, 1500, that's the Verizon carrier price and that's also X tax. So you have to add another 12.5% sales tax on top of that, which then brings you up to around 1700 bucks. All right. Um, you are paying for a lot of innovation, you're paying for a lot of style. Interesting, a lot of the focus groups that we've done and a lot of the retail and carrier partners did not even blink an eye, uh, blink an eye lid at the price. Um, for, the, for the quality of the materials, the form, the finish, um, you know, they actually think that's an extremely reasonable price. So be curious to see when it hits the streets. The pre-order and pre-sales have done extremely well, actually forced us to delay the product so we could build up more inventory. Um, so that means there's a, you know, a lot of people that are very keen to, to, to get this device. Okay, next video. We didn't set out to create a razor. It turns out the world was ready for another razor. For our foldable device, we had to re-engineer how we designed foam from the bottom up. And this latest innovation is a journey that has taken four years. At the end of that journey, we created a, a device that has all the capability that you're used to, yet it literally folds in half. We started working on plastic OLED displays maybe uh, in 2015. Uh, at the same time, Renovo RMT was looking at their device. We wanted a hinge mechanism that snapped open and snapped closed. Boy. We went to multiple different core hinge designs. We knew we had the right design when the design kind of got out of the way of the rest of the components. To ensure Razor's zero gap design, the hinge includes movable support plates that rigidly support the display when the phone is open, but collapse out of the way when the phone is closed. What you'll see with the new Razor and that focus on the team is really around this idea of craftsmanship. Just an obsession of the quality of the materials is something the team focused on. It's a really beautiful mixture of glass and stainless steel and some resin. We feel like we've really got that perfect kind of blending of this amazing engineering and incredible design. So when we started doing research on the design for Razer, I think we started with about 26 different prototypes until we finally got to the clamshell design. This new form factor isn't just something that's technologically really cool, but it's something that's going to give consumers the big screen that they want and the portable and pocketable device that they've been asking for. So what sets this design apart in addition to the fact that it folds in half? is that we've optimized an experience for the inside and we've optimized an experience for the outside. And you're able to transition between the two when it works for you. Whether it's making a phone call, browsing, watching a movie, they're gonna do this a lot. So what we do is we have a machine that opens and shuts and accelerates that to make sure that you could close it, you could open it again and again and again. We didn't bring the Razor to market until we knew it was ready. The new Razor signifies a breakthrough in the mobile industry. It disrupts the status quo, the way that it's designed, the materials it uses, and applying technologies in a way that brings a product that inspires consumers to get excited about the industry, not just about the next spec that you can pack into a standard smartphone. To me, the Razor is visceral. It's a solution. Revolutionary, breakthrough, piece of art that falls in hand. It just feels good. I have to admit, there's nothing like the closure of hanging up with someone. I'm done with you. You know, it's like permanent. There's no one. Uh, turn, turn the flash over. Um, there's no. Oh, did I hang up on the phone or anything like that? It's just nice, good old-fashioned, solid closure. Okay, so as I was saying, we kept the razor design. So if you look at some of the old razors to the to the new one, the design legacy is still there, uh, even with the front display. The front display is actually interactive. Which is the next one. So you can do multiple tasks on it, like quick view, quick reactions. Um, next one, it's last one shot. Yeah, so you can see here, um, your messaging comes through, so you've got your Spotify going, your messages, you know. You can do video calling from the front as well, so you can actually video call, but you can also transfer. So if you're doing a video call and the screen's open, then you close it, it will continue via the smaller screen um, as well. Okay, 
So premium construction, so we use metals in the product, stainless steel, um, stainless steel frame and a stainless steel under housing. So if you have a look at the device, I'll, this is the hinge mechanism and underneath there was, I'll wait for this to go on the repeat again. Um, and I think it's actually pretty cool. So this actually slides forward and then comes up to give the underside of the device um, where the where the, the hinge is, it gives it solid, it gives it depth, so it doesn't you don't poke at it, you don't damage it. Yeah. I should, I should take this one around the other side. Start from this end of the table. So the screen quality is really, really good. We're very proud of our display. We've done a lot of functional testing, um, hundreds of thousands of hours of cycle times on the flip. Um, if you look really, really close, the flip actually, the, the, um, the display slides underneath the bottom of the chin. And this is how one of the ways we're able to eliminate the, uh, the, the, uh, the crease. So by moving it into the bottom of the chin, it takes, because when you fold something, it's got to move somewhere. Uh, and we do that, so it moves onto the inside. So we're just noticing here that there is a tiny gap that you can see. As we start to close it. Did you make any adjustments in light of Samsung's experience with, with having a gap? No. This has always been since day one in the design. This is one of our uh, design goals. The, um, the hinge is what took a lot of the time uh, to make it happen. And like I said, because of the development that we did on our, on our plastic AMOLED display, it means that you know the display toughness is, is there. And putting the slides at the back keeps the display nice and solid. Minimizes the amount of ripples and dips. In the display. Although there's a video that says bumps and bumps bump. Yeah, so let me explain what that so, means. Yeah, <laughs> let me give some context to that. So people have been used to using smartphones for 10 plus years. And when you pick up a smartphone, you're used to having a glass finish, right? A very flat glass finish. With a plastic display, um, because it's got a fold somewhere, you need, you're going to see a slight bump and ripple. So it's more about, because a lot of people are commenting, oh, it's got bumps and ripples, where the hinge mechanism is. It's got bumps and ripples because it's plastic and it's folded out. When you turn the display on, you don't actually see it, but it's just to say that that's normal. It's mm. not gonna, you're not gonna have a glass finish yeah. when the phone opens up a flap. Mm. That's pretty, pretty much what the message is we're trying to deliver. The, the rumor is that uh, Samsung Galaxy Z Flip's gonna have a very thin piece of glass, and of course Corning is also working on folding glass, so presumably in your labs you're working on that too. We're always working on lots of different, you know, Lots of different experiments and cooking things in the kitchen, but you know, when it's time to serve it on the for dinner, we'll, uh, we'll let everyone know. Um, it's got like a 2,500 million battery in it. Yes. I guess. Uh, how? What do you expect your consumers to get in terms of battery life relative to a normal photo? So our local testing in country, um, you'll get a full solid day's worth out of that if you're an average user. If you're a power user like me, um, I tend to go dead by about seven o'clock. So. But with the turbo charge on it, 15 minutes will give you another four or five the, hours. The same it's the same turbo charge we've had on all the Motorola devices, correct? Yeah, Type C USB. 15 minutes is four or five hours. Yeah, 15 minutes of charge will give you another four or five hours of, of standby. Um, and you said that you tested, I think you said like 100,000 folds or something. What was the number? There Did was. I that again? Oh, we won't tell you the exact number. I said hundreds of thousands. But what what is the what is that actually estimate for consumer usage? Is that like three years? Is that like, how well, it'll, are you actually it, expecting? It'll exceed normal? well well beyond the two year warranty period of okay. the device. Okay. All right. But if for some happen for some reason that there is a defect, uh, Motorola will cover that under warranty, no cost to the consumer. Okay. All right. If there is a, a a defect with the display that, that may appear, uh, or even anything within the device, we'll cover it at no cost. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, if you've poked something in your screen or you've done mechanical damage or you know done something else, well then there'll be a fixed rate pricing to repair that. Do you think the <coughs> there'll be a skin that will re replicate the uh, the keypad of the, the V series? You know, ah, where's my phone? So I think I think it's the one. Your one personal one? Uh, yeah, where's my personal one? one? Oh, is it? I, Here it is. So for those of you we like to we want to continue on with the nostalgia piece, um, we've actually got the original razor display. And it is functional. So it's got a dial pad, so you can actually dial the numbers. And if you hit the green button, it will call. Um, if you want to go into messaging, um, if you want to go into messaging, you've got to press clear. You've got to think actually like you being an old smartphone user. Oh no. Sorry, an old uh, feature phone user. So if you want to go messaging, you've got to hit the messaging tag button and then it opens you up straight into the messenger icon. Um, so is that standard on, on all of the phones? Yeah, it's in there. Yeah. Even the internet. If you want to go into the internet, you press a little WAP browser icon and it opens up... Uh, <laughs> well, you know, that's what we used to call it. Yeah. And it actually yeah. brings you into the... Um, Chrome. To the Google Chrome. So it's a, a functional display. So if you want to have it... My dad loves it because he's like, Oh, I can finally see numbers on the phone again. <laughs> so, you know, there's a bit of a, a market out there um, for, uh, for how they would do it. So the other thing as well, this is an eSIM device. Right, so you cannot you cannot get a SIM card and physically stick a SIM card in the device. So we've we've worked with all the Australian operators, and we've enabled this phone to be yeah. uh, configurable uh, via eSIM. You can go into store, or you can some of them will send you a QR code. All the different carriers have got different uh, different ways of doing it. Is that the only the, the major carriers that actually have eSIM? So if you're if you're with the MVNO. Uh, no, some of the MVNOs are supporters as well. We were just talking earlier, we've got to get the MVNO list. Yeah. We'll send it out, we'll send you yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so some of the carriers already enable their MVNOs to um, to use uh, eSIM as well. Do they? Because yeah. I've been having this concession last week and everyone said they don't. Is this the first eSIM only phone? Yes. Well, Apple's no. had eSIM uh, for Apple. a while. Oh, no, yeah. but eSIM, eSIM only. ESIM eSIM only. only. Yeah. No, this is eSIM only. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, so, that was the question. So the reason why we've done eSIM only, obviously there's not a lot of space on the device. It's super thin, you know, batteries take up, there's two batteries in this, there's the processors, there's the antennas and all the rest of it, Wi-Fi, GPS. So we wanted to minimise the amount of gaps and, and, you know, places where we had to plug, put plugs. The other reason why we've done that is, um, you know, the, um, the, other, the other reason why we've uh, done that is we've also made the device um, whoopsie proof. So if you, whoops, I dropped my wine on it, I dropped my beer or I dropped something, um, water, the device will still work. So it's got waterproofing as well built into the device, water resistance. Um, and not having as many gaps, um, not having as many gaps to seal and what have you, it just makes the device a little bit more a little bit more rigid. But you can't take it underwater, right? No, absolutely not. Yeah. You go for a swim, your phone's going for a swim with the fish. So it's all well. like splash resistant. Yes. So is it P2 then? Huh? Is it P2? Splash proof? Or yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So on these phones, do we have to download the uh, Motorola Retro app? No, it's in, it's in the phone. Add, it's add an option in the menu. You want to show them how to do it? It's Android 9, is that right? It's launching on Android 9, so uh, and it will be upgrading to Android 10. Uh, we'll announce those dates very shortly. So who's, with that experience, if you're moving from front screen to back screen, yeah. you were at that, and then you'll use, that, you'll use the Android experience? No, so we've worked with, we've worked with Google I'll, I'll do it again, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry. to enable yeah. certain yeah. APIs, which yeah. will then become yeah. Yeah. standard. This is great. So you can type in text. Thank you. No, no, it's... It's, it, it evolves yeah. into that. That's, um, so you can also do dual screen on this. So, cool. so you can have the top half and the bottom half doing I mean, more different displays cool. as well. So you can do split screen on this as well, as it is. Or you can then flip it, close it, open it up to what's on the front. Can you have the front screen on at the same time? Is there a use case for that? The only use case for having the front screen on is, uh, I'm sorry, sorry. Taking someone's photo when they want to is, uh, is a small feature. Right, so you see a little smiley face there? 
So when you're actually taking a picture, it tells everyone that you're about to take the picture. <laughs> and when you've taken it, it goes green or goes from yellow. The other one is it's got smile detection. So the phone will automatically take a photo when everyone's smiling, even before you take a picture or even after you've taken a picture. And then we'll present that picture to you or blend it. Um, we've also kept put night, the night mode, um, night mode vision on this device. So what was on the Motorola One Vision, uh, the AI um, in that for great low light quality images, we have put it as well on this. So the nighttime photography is pretty good. It's got a portrait mode on there, but only one lens. Is it using Google's <laughs> Pixel software for that? Good question. I don't know. We'll find There's out. always one like that for me every every, every session. We'll find that. Do you want to take that? All right, we'll ask Rachel. Wait, is Rachel coming here today? She's not coming here. Yeah. yeah. It'll be the Rachel High Long Pass was right. I was gonna say substantial. Like it feels like a little bit of Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Well, it is a plastic. You know what I mean? Like the real push it all in hard. Like wireless charging. Can't have everything. Yeah, yeah. 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 We had to fit everything into a small package. So yeah, we had to make compromises on certain things without ruining performance. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can see it moving. Is that right? Is that normal? What's that? You can see kind of the screen yeah. down. And I'll show you why. Can I just have your password real quick? I'll show you why. When you fold it, you watch the bottom of the screen it actually moves. Oh, okay. And the reason why it moves that is to take the uh, compression okay. of when it's folding. Okay, cool. It takes the stress the off. The gatekeepers mm -hmm. of the truth, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. Get that one. Nice to be in Get some banky towels. Question yeah. well, you about, you, about you saying you could remember. run. Uh, yeah, seamless transition. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, in the UI, yeah. or you can uh, yeah. like yeah. some whole yeah. 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 I was I was just trying to find it in the menu. Uh, uh, find it. Like, is it? Yeah. Can it do that with every really Android app, or is it only a switch? No, it will. Do you manually? Seamless transition from the front has the from the display to front. Three G. So YouTube, video, video calling. Video calling, music, uh, messages, it's four or five experiences that does it. Um, um, so with the Samsung Fold, you have like essentially like a whitelist of apps that are enabled to do that. Is it same as that? So, so there's like a menu page where yeah. you can go in and... So we can get you the list. Yeah, yeah. You I, work, if work I can just chance? see the um, UI that it trend, uh, Experiences that transition like from Fold to Fold. Actually, I've got them on my laptop. Where's my laptop? Yeah. Um, I was just curious how, how that's handled. Yeah. Really and the other one that you can do as well is split screen. So you can have like messages on the top and browser on the bottom. Okay. Um, you can only do that on the on the open side. Can you can you dial whilst it's closed? Can you dial numbers from the front? Oh. Okay. How durable is it? Like if you drop it closed, is there any risk of actually damaging the screen? Mm. Not really, but I mean, it's closed to protect the screen, mm -hmm. and it's a, a solid, you know, metal plastic uh, housing on the outside, so it's not fragile. But Roll is known for its toughness. Please, so please don't drop it. Oh well, no! The question, the, the, re the well, so like the reason I ask is because the fold came with a case, which no, really no. didn't do much. Yeah. Will yours come with case? So it doesn't come with a case, but there is a case as an optional accessory. Uh, there's a leather one, 15. We, have we got a sample of the case? Yeah. We don't have a sample of it yet. Uh, it's $59. There'll be a case available. And we've already seen online that Kate Spade's made hard covers and flip covers and all sorts of things uh, that are branded. Are you worried that dust is going to get underneath underneath that? I mean, uh, I can lift it with my finger. Yeah, no. We've done uh, we've done dust, dust testing in, that, you know, in the US. So, are you worried that journalists are going to get plus, your finger plus, underneath? Plus, yeah. also, if you look at it, Alex, you can yeah. see through it, right? Yeah, yeah, you can see through it. It'll actually fall out from the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, it will be time to do little miniature videos after this presser. We're almost done anyway, so don't get don't, don't stressed for the time. Because I'm going to pop into a room. So any other questions, guys? So when, when will they actually be available to purchase in Australia? I mean, I have pre-orders today, but when's okay, so the... Pre-orders today, on shelf date, will be the 24th of February. Yep, Monday the 24th. <laughs> you guys know when Samsung is releasing theirs? 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 Same agency. Yeah. Different name. Okay. You usually like three, three, four weeks later. And uh, you know, will you will you have a dual eSIM version in the future? So for people who want dual SIM. <laughs> well, I've already read about supposed 5G versions, but yeah. So this is 4G, yeah? This is 4G. 4G, yeah. So, guys, just in terms of the box, um, as part of this, we've actually got, there is a, a, we've partnered with Denon, Denon Audio, and we've tuned a stereo headset. This is a premium headset, uh, which uses a Type-C uh, USB. But for those customers who love using their Bang & Olufsen or Bose or some of the other stuff, in the box is also a Type-C to 3.5mm uh, jack as well. So you can use a, a, you know, just a normal standard, um, standard headset. So for people who like doing that, what's the AC like on the actual converter? Me asking another hard question. When you mention top tier brands... It, we'll we'll find out. Answer. We'll come back to you. That's what I miss about being the product. I probably could answer that. <laughs> I probably could answer that question when I was in the product team, but now uh, I'm just a salesperson. No. Do you want me to I seem to be a so spreadsheet monkey these days. <laughs> okay. uh, PLs and you know, beat up marketing because they're spending too much money in sales because they're not spending it and they're not selling off. What's the aspect ratio? The display is three by four and it's twenty one by nine on the main display. So the front is three by four, yeah. the main display is twenty one by nine. And it's two K. Um, actually, if you, there's a really the Top Gun film clip is really good, plays back really well on this. It looks awesome. Yeah, there's top, if you just do a Google search on my one, um, Top Gun HD, um, the both the first one and the second one, the trailers are awesome. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Okay. What do you want to knock this again? Hang on, I'll give you my finger. Is, is that a speaker? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Or, or on top of the bottom. So the fingerprint is not on the screen. No, it's on the face. No, it's on the face. No, it's on the face. No, so is it optical no. or ultrasound? It's not. <laughs> so what's the thing? What kind of contract? Uh, I don't know. The actual... Probably optical. Probably uh, optical. Uh, no, it's not either. Can you find, ask Rach, is it optical yeah. or ultrasonic and fingerprint reader? And it doesn't have The fingerprint reader? Yeah. Capacity. Yeah. Mm, is it so. optical or ultrasonic? Yeah, but we... I think so it is possible to flip it shut, but you sort of... Not as easily as the... <laughs> it's as, going to get used to, yeah. used to using it's it. Like a, There's a competition here. That's it. Yeah. Like yeah. almost. Yeah, that's it. Um, and the, yeah, you've got to flip with the phone. You've got to flip with the phone. Yeah, the thumb. 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 Just can't quite. Yeah, it's it's the, yeah. the um, I, I can't tell you. I think one of the best selling points um, of this product is just to, when you're talking. Is that that feeling of closure when you're just hanging up on someone? Like I'm done. If you need closure, buy a Motorola. <laughs> and when you spring display, and and when the phone rings, opening it will answer, right? Yeah, you can switch it to answer. Yeah. Uh, and closing will close it. And closing will close it. And, and that, as you s just said, it's customized. Unless it's a video. Huh? Call. Unless it's a video, video call. Yeah, That'll you can continue. answer from the front. And is that Google Duo that is video calling, or? It supports. Hmm. It does Duo on it. Um, it like also do, Skype. Yeah, the Skype does WhatsApp, FaceTime. Oh, not FaceTime. Facebook. Um, Messenger. Messenger. Yeah. There's an alternative to Skype. Do you think one twenty eight gigs enough? For Memory. For phone that costs more. Um. Yeah. Storage. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, most consumers will be happy with one twenty eight. We find a lot of consumers out at the high end of town tend to put a lot of stuff into the cloud anyway. Uh, and Google's giving you know cloud storage on the photos, so you can move stuff into there. No, 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 there's no micro SD, no SIM cards. Like I said, there's just 
we've packed a lot into such a small footprint. We had to make certain certain compromises. Do you have like a review program? Will we be able to do reviews? Yeah, 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 there will be a yeah. review in a couple of weeks. weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks, yeah. These aren't the commercial grade units that are suitable for review or testing, so they'll be coming um, in a couple of weeks' time closer to actual on shelf date, and then we'll obviously be reaching out to everyone to put. Um, do you reckon they'll be out before people start heading off to MWC? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. These are these are the pre production uh, pre production units that literally only just came in. Um, once the factories reopen after Chinese New Year, we'll get the the production units. Factories are in Wuhan, are they? Well, I mean, <laughs> we have factories all over the place. But also, the factories are going to be closed for longer well, because of the extension of the yeah. yeah, we don't know what we don't know what, what will happen. The good thing is, is our stuff's already been built and just sitting there ready to ship. So. Yeah, but it's going to be impossible. To <laughs> one, one problem at a time. <laughs> one problem at a time. We won't speculate on that. Why not? <laughs> Slightly, maybe. maybe yeah. Antibacterial coating on the screen? We need some government, 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 government funding for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. I'll compliment your face mark with every product. <laughs> a hand, <laughs> sand, uh, hand sanitizer <laughs> bottle with every motor mask. Yeah. yeah. Um, but thank you for coming in, guys. If you've got any questions, uh, I hope to see you all later on tonight um, at uh, at the event. Uh, please have a play. We'll, yeah. you know, take, um, take videos. The release um, images, like stock images and video, should be actually sitting in your inbox already. Um, if it's not, let one of the Xeno team know. But you should have already received it by now. Um, like I said, again, just until six pm, please. Um, and then that's for social media as well guys please yeah. tweeting and Instagram yeah. oh, oh, no. 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 <laughs> it's like in live streaming the whole the whole time, time yeah. Yeah. I'll be the fun police on this on this situation but please do we've already uh, said good. we've yeah. already not invited one journalist for being a naughty boy Oh, so, oh, no, no. Really? You should, you should be him. Oh, oh, no. No. I think I know. Is Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.